Welcome to MTD CNC. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. It's an educational piece now. We're going to talk about thermal growth. Now, personally, I've, had, I've been lucky enough to work, I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet, but I've been lucky enough to work on machines that have spindle chillers, and I never really had to worry about it. But today, we're going to talk to Steve from uh, HSM Components about running this old Herco, well, fairly old Herco, and making actually um, what is quite a precise face on this, on this engine block part. Mm -hmm. So, can you talk to me about uh, how, you, uh, how you made the face, what the, what the tolerances are, and what the Herco does, and what, what thermal growth you experience? Yeah, well, because I've not got a chiller on this spindle, and this is a long process, roughing all of this out and putting these pockets in, there's a lot of heat gets into the spindle, and typically you'll get 05 in the Z and possibly 02 in the Y because of the growth in the casting. So what I do with this is I, I do all of the work apart from the bores and the top face and come in the next day when it's cool and, and do that. Otherwise I'll see uh, a mismatch, uh, an angle on it perhaps. And the customer stipulated that it's got to be as close to zero across, across the length. Across the flat, so parallelism needs to be yeah, absolutely bang That's right. the most important thing because if the cylinder head fitted on it at a slight angle, you get an imbalance then in the engine. So can you spell out for me what happens when the spindle uh, heats up? What happens to the casting? How does the construction of the, of the machine affect where it grows, how, what, or in what angle it grows to? Yeah, I mean, if you think the spindle sits in a very large casting, and if you heat something up, it expands. So all you need is a little bit of heat in that large casting, and it starts to expand. It's going to expand even a, a small amount. It's going to affect the tolerances and, and the accuracy. So what happens is because it's a, like a C-frame construction with these vertical mm -hmm. mills, the C expands to more like a kind of right angled square, and you get an angular, uh, an angular uh, change. So yeah. it's no longer parallel to the bed, and also a linear change because it's growing out, up and out. Yeah. So you change an X and Z, and also you get an angle. So what did you see um, when you were roughing this face, hot? versus when you came in and finished it afterwards cool? Well, I knew that I'd have issues with the heat because of the amount of time that the spindles are running for. So when I did the finishing up, I offset it 0.1 of a mil just to make sure that I didn't scrap the part off. So I faced it off, measured it, and it, it was a little bit out. So and did you see a little surface here maybe where the finishing pass didn't touch it because it had been roughing at that angle? No, no. I, but you I, just measured it. I left point 0.2 on for a finishing pass, but like I say, I offset it point 0.1, so I'm only taking point 0.1 off on the first issue. It cut it okay, but it, it was out on the tolerance, so leaving it until the next day when it's cooled down, and coming in and finishing it was the ideal thing. Brilliant. You don't, well, normally, I wouldn't think about anything like that. So if you've got an older machine without a spindle chiller, you need to maybe start to be thinking about uh, thermal growth if you've got complex well really fine finished faces like this i've learned something today i hope you guys have too thank you steve it's a pleasure